There are many times in my anatomy class when I teach my students a specific process just so they sound smart when they go home and tell their families about endochondral ossification. And this is one of those times. So let's make you sound smart. Hey everybody, Organized Biology here, where we make difficult biology concepts simple. And today we're talking about that pesky term, endochondral ossification. And we need to break this word down first, because anytime you have a very complicated word, it usually tells you generally what it does or what it is. So first we've got that prefix endo, and that just refers to inside or into. Chondral always refers to cartilage. We can think of cartilage as kind of that hard plastic like in our rib. And then we've got the big word ossification. And ossify, that prefix means bone growth or development. So there we have it. We're going to have bone development happening into a layer of cartilage. So how does that actually occur? Do you know that all of your bones are pretty well developed unless you're a tiny little baby, in which case you probably shouldn't be watching this video. But when you were in your mother's womb, you were actually first a big model of cartilage. You had no bones. So before we even make your bones, we need to lay down a layer of cartilage. So in order to learn how this is actually occurring, we're going to be using a lot of drawings. So get your colored pencils and your papers ready, everybody. Now, the first question I want you to ask is when does this occur? When does endochondral ossification start? Well, it actually starts when you are an embryo. So up here, I've drawn something called a blastula. And this is basically a ball of cells that have three distinct parts to them when you are an embryo in your mother's womb. We've got the outermost part in green, that's the ectoderm, the outside part, going to form basically your nervous system and your skin. Then we've got the mesoderm, that's going to form most of your internal organs and bones. And then we've got the endoderm, that's going to form basically that tube of your gut. But we're focusing again on bone development, so we're going to focus on something called the mesoderm, the mesoderm. And the mesoderm is going to have very important cells called mesenchymal stem cells. Now you know that stem cells can basically turn into a variety of different cell types. So these guys are first going to turn into something called a progenitor cell. We're going to draw like a diamond. This kind of means before creation of something. So before the creation of obviously cartilage or bone, we've got these progenitor cells. And then finally, they're going to differentiate into the thing we are really focusing on today, which will be called chondroblasts. So as you can predict, based on our little key here, chondro means cartilage, blast means a cell that's going to build, so therefore we're going to build cartilage with these cells. So that's exactly what these chondroblasts are going to do at around week nine of development. So what do we have here? Well, we've got our chondroblasts. They laid down basically this model of cartilage. So we've got the outermost part of some, some connective tissue, and then the inside part is this uncalcified cartilage. So it's not very hard yet. It's actually kind of malleable, kind of like a medium hard plastic. And it's secured in place by something called the perichondrum literally translating to the outside of the cartilage model. So we've got basically a framework of what we're going to make the bone into. So we've got the beginning set up, but one of the best things you can do in any class is begin with the end in mind. So what I'm going to do real quick is actually draw the end product of bone that we're going for so that then we can see how we go from this to the end product. So this is basically an almost fully developed bone. It'll be fully developed once you finish the video. As you can see, the majority of the bone is going to be, again, bone tissue itself. But we still have a little bit of cartilage left, so how did all this turn into bone if it started as cartilage? Well, that's where endochondral ossification comes into play. So let's get rolling. So again, we've got a chondroblast chilling inside this perichondrum with some uncalcified cartilage here, but we need to turn it into bone. So what's going to happen is, is some of these progenitor cells are still going to be present, and they are going to begin differentiating at a certain point into something called osteoblasts. So osteoblast literally translates to bone builder cells. And I'm going to draw them like bricks because they're kind of laying brick by brick building bone. But the problem is, is this will only occur when there is a blood supply. So again, in order to make those bone builder cells, we've got to get some blood supply in here. So how do we do that? Well, the chondroblasts, which have now matured after their building extravaganza, have now turned into things called chondrocytes. And these chondrocytes are going to begin producing a very important factor called VEG-F. 
specifically vague FA. Now, vague F stands for vascular endothelial growth factor. That's a big, long word. Again, it makes you sound smart, but just look at the vascular word. That means a blood supply. So as these cells begin producing these vague F protein factors, they will start drawing a blood supply to this region. So we're going to draw what that looks like next. All right, so now that we've got that blood supply in here because of the vague FA, we now differentiated those progenitor cells into our osteoblasts. And that's the first main thing that's gonna start happening in terms of bone development, is these osteoblasts are going to begin laying down something called a bone collar. And this bone collar is made of compact bone. It's very dense and protective. And the reason the osteoblasts knew how to build that is because there was already cartilage laid down. See, the thing is, bone development ossification can only occur when there's cartilage already present there. So we're eventually going to build a lot of like other bone tissue inside of this bone, but we need to have an even better model of cartilage. Yes, we have like the uncalcified version, but we like to develop bone into something called calcified cartilage. So in the center here, what I'm going to kind of draw is what has occurred. So what's occurring during this process is certain osteocytes are starting to get really big. This is called hypertrophy. And as they hypertrophy, they're basically building up a lot of calcium stores inside of them. But the calcium stores are no good just inside of the cells. In order to work properly to become calcified cartilage, they have to release them into the space outside of themselves. So that's exactly what they do. These osteocytes will release that calcium into what's called the matrix. That's basically the space surrounding all of these cells. This creates a cartilage called now calcified cartilage. But here's the sad reality of what happens after. When these cells release all that calcium into themselves, well, now what they're surrounding themselves with is the equivalent of like hard plastic. So they're basically separated out from any other thing that's surrounding it, including the blood supply. At this point, osteocyte receives no blood supply. And if you ever watch any of my videos, whenever cells lose a blood supply, they end up dying. So these osteocytes basically sacrifice themselves for the sake of building this calcified cartilage so that we can now successfully develop bone into this area that would be calcified cartilage. So now that these osteoblasts have a model to kind of build upon, now we can start developing bone tissue into this space. Now into this space, what type of bone are we making? Are we making compact bone or are we making spongy bone based on the finished product? Well, inside here, we're actually going to make some spongy bone. So we need some help because spongy bone is kind of this reticulated structure, right? We've got to build some stuff, but then we also have to break some of it down to make it kind of lightweight and airy. So we need not only the builder cells, those osteoblasts, but we need another cell type called the osteoclasts. And these guys kind of look like those little ghosts if you ever played the game Pac-Man. They kind of look like those little guys. And these osteoclasts literally, tra <laughs> literally translates to bone breakers or bone demolition cells. So these guys are, again, going to come help the osteoblasts basically break down the extra bone tissue that they laid down. So the result is we're going to build bone tissue that's going to look very spongy which again is the product of osteoblasts building it and then clasts kind of breaking it down. Now, interestingly, the osteoclasts actually come from a different cell line, hematopoietic cells, the uh, blood cell creating cells. And they uh, differentiate into osteoclasts, which then migrate into this area. Now, at this point, however, we still have a pretty like small, short bone. And if this were like the bone of the humerus, we need to grow it longer so it develops into something like this. So these chondrocytes and chondroblasts together are going to begin continuing to make calcified cartilage as they basically grow, divide, and then release that calcium to make all the space here, as well as on the bottom. So basically how that would happen is one cell would divide and turn into two cells, right? Well, the bottom cell would die, right? Hypertrophy and die and create that calcified cartilage below it. Well, then this cell would continue pushing upwards and dividing 
And eventually the bottom cell dies again and we keep pushing it up and up and up. And that's how we develop a longer structure of calcified cartilage. And all of this is occurring around week 12 of development. Which is why you can guess it's really important for mother to get her calcium supplementation in because the baby is literally building bone tissue. Okay, so we're going to fast forward to about month eight, which is going to be about week 35 of pregnancy. Now at this point, the bone almost looks completely done, right? We've got all of this part complete, but now we've got a little structure on the top that's still basically cartilage, okay? You see in the mature bone, we've got bone there. So how do we get that into bone? Well, you'd think we just continue building upwards, right? Because we kind of built upwards and out from there. But in this case, we do the same thing as we saw back here. We are going to have these osteocytes produce that vascular endothelial growth factor, thus drawing a new found blood supply to this area. And you remember what happened last time we did that, right? We got differentiation of those progenitor cells to make more osteoblasts in the area. So the osteoblasts are going to start laying down even more bone tissue in this little region, aided by the help of the osteoclasts, to lay down a secondary ossification center that will then develop the spongy bone basically inside out, just like we saw previously where we were developing it inside out in the primary ossification center. So this part again was the primary ossification center. And now we've got another one called the secondary ossification center. So as you can see, when baby's about to be born, right? Babies are generally born at week 40. We've got basically a fully developed bone matrix filling most of their bone. But as you can tell, we still have a little bit of cartilage left over. And in fact, that cartilage is going to be left over all the way up until anywhere from between age 12 to 25. So you're telling me you still have cartilage in your bone? Well, everybody has cartilage on the outside parts of their bones even still. This is called articular cartilage. In the articular cartilage, think of it as like a little plastic cap on the end of your bones to help protect them because a lot of the times there's another bone right next to it, say like humerus to the radius and the ulna, well, we need to have a little protective layer so that it's not just bone on bone. Because if this layer starts to wear down, you can eventually get arthritis, the inflammation of joint tissue. And we don't want that. So we've got articular cartilage there to pad both sides. But we also, as you can see, have a little bit of calcified cartilage still present in the main part of the bone called the diaphysis, the shaft. And this is called the epiphyseal plate. Epi refers to on top of, on top of the what? The diaphysis, right? Because this whole long shaft is called the diaphysis. A lot of wonderful terms here, right? As you can see, the epiphyseal plate, otherwise known as the growth plate, is made of cartilage. So as you can guess, what can we develop into calcified cartilage? Well, as we saw previously, that calcified cartilage turned into bone tissue. So this is available space for bone to develop. So if you still have that epiphyseal plate intact, you are not done growing. You can actually see this on an x-ray. If you're say age 15 and you're not done growing, if you take an x-ray of like your femur or your humerus, you'll see a dark spot, the epiphyseal plate, and that indicates that you are not done growing yet. But eventually, as you go through puberty and you have growth hormone and estrogen if you're a female and testosterone if you're a male, eventually this bone, after growing, 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 will close this epiphyseal plate up and make bone in the area. And that will eventually be called the epiphyseal line. Which basically means bone has developed into that space and now you are done growing. How does that exactly work? Well, I would prefer to use markers for this. So let's say that we've got that epiphyseal plate right here, right? And we are developing bone right underneath it. Well, if we want to extend the bone, make it bigger, right? The chondroblasts, the cartilage part, have to build, build, build upwards while the bone tissue builds upwards as well. So in that way, if that's happening on this side, if this is like the top end of the bone right here, and this continues to build up and up, what can we do to the bone? Well, we can grow it longer, right? So as it builds up, builds up, builds up, eventually epiphyseal plate closes, bone fuses, and now there's nowhere for that bone to grow. We can't lengthen the bone anymore. If you wanna learn more about the hormones that kinda of help change this up, I recommend you watch this video next.